come to episode 19. So uh, I have two questions to start with. Um, this is my first time on the mat since uh, since oh. the uh, the back procedure. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna try to find myself, so to speak. See how see what the <laughs> what the limits of, of, of this thing are. It's a yoga I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where the limits lie without hitting the pain because that's not good. Anyways, so we got two questions. Um, I'm gonna try not to do too many reps. I'm gonna try to move also a little gingerly, guys. So the first question we had is from Adolfo Ferranda, and his question is regarding a dog fight. I actually had to Google it because I don't know what this position is, although Enrique knows. Uh, I usually bat with names, and a lot of positions have different, different names. Um, I don't understand why it's called dog fight. Because to me, it's kind of like... Uh, we almost brought Chloe for the dog fight. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought her. She would have been on time. Uh, <laughs> or later. <laughs> so, uh, let me try to stay on this side because I think this side is probably better for me. Anyways, um, so um, Adolfo, who also happens to be the guy that put indexed um, a lot of the uh, uh, all the videos we've done, whether it's on Roll with the Fox or whether it's stuff on my YouTube channel or uh, the TriStar Gym channel. So we're both on our knees, and Enrique, I guess we're gonna go over a couple of scenarios where I have the underhook. In this case, Enrique has the underhook. So en Enrique has the underhook, and he's kind of low on my hip, which is which is very good. So I don't have a lot of time to uh, to do to do anything. <laughs> I'm using no strength. Do, I'm sure. Do I need to start? No time. I'm still <laughs> trying to explain things. Okay. Don't make me put this on. I always, guys, I always tell my guys, I always have one good one left in me. Maybe afterwards I will not be able to move, but that one time it's going to be bad for them. So he has an underhook, and he also has a favorable head position. So if that's the case, uh, there's two things you could do. Once you start to go down, uh, I'm actually going to try to go into a split guard. But before we go down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my weight, and I'm going to take... So notice as I'm shifting my weight, I post a little further. This buys me a little bit of time. This is very important. I'm actually going to pull that arm, and I'm going to take a big step over with authority. You have to do it with authority. So I'm going to take a big step over, and then I just drop. This immediately puts me in a really good, good attacking position. Right now, what I would try to do is actually lock up a reverse triangle and then mangle Enrique. So let's look at it again. This is my, probably my favorite way to try to deal with, um, uh, uh, with that position. Dog fight. I don't like the, the name. I Strong know. underhook. Strong underhook. I like that better. But a lot of times, if I'm going with, with, with a big guy um, and sort of uh, he's, he's trying to... You know, I, we're playing no gi. I'm always trying to make sure that he doesn't get too close. At some point, I'm going to pop up. Because I know now... So, so freeze, freeze, freeze. Okay. So, <laughs> why do you keep moving? <laughs> I'll make you choke you. Um, so, as I popped up, I know he will be able to put me down. But I also know that he's going to be extending. As he's extending, I'm going to pull and I'm going to step with authority. And again, in this case, I'm going to get a regular triangle lock it up. So I guess I put myself into a position of a strong underhook for Enrique or dogfight. But I want the guy to be slightly extended. So that, that uh, step over works really, really well. Uh, let's go back to sort of we already here. He has a strong underhook. So basically, and he has a favorable head position. If I had my, the right now, I could also, if, he, if he's too low, I can try to square up to him and attack an arming guillotine, which then is gonna lead to a few other things. But let's, let's first where he has his, his head on my neck. So when I'm gonna try to shift, so I try to shift, so I'm on my knees, but I need to try to shift and step with authority. From here, guys, this should be a, you know, I will lock up a reverse triangle and attack 
from here. All right. Um, if his head gets gets below mine, even if he has the underhook, I will square up, and I'm going to attack from turtle with you know arming guillotines, you know, with possibly transitioning to the anacondas. Um, let's look at it. What happens if if we're in a dogfight where I have the underhook? So again, guys, the underhook high, um, it, it's good because it, it, it lifts his arm, but also beware, when I have the underhook, if the guy's really strong, he can try to transition into Norris's and Anacondas. So even if I have the underhook in a good position, which is closer to his hip, um, if I'm higher, you're a little bit more vulnerable. If I'm by the hip, that opening is a little tighter, but also my positioning may not be as strong um, I want to put my head in the same position on the neck. This buys, it, it gives me a lot of good possible um, not to get dominated, all right? Now, if I feel like he's starting to do something, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold and attack with a Gatame from here immediately. So, again, I will try to get on top, but a lot of times that's not possible. You need to recognize that it's better for you to get on the bottom with a very strong grip. In this case, again, I have an underhook. I would try to control, but I need to also post because a lot of times the guy is trying to, you know, drive me forward. So if I feel that right now, you can see I'm already leaning to my left side, which means that my, my posture is being broken. If that happens, I'm going to put my foot on the hip, stretch him out, and attack with a guitar. Another possibility we can do, um, if if I'm actually if I if I'm in a better position, what I'm going to try to do is I try to reach to the far side knee and start driving. Notice that I'm immediately as that happens, I am retracting my arm because I don't want to get the sweep or you know get on top with my arms uh, caught in a bad position. So again, if I feel like I'm actually gonna be able to do better. I can sometimes even put up my leg, I'm starting to drive. If I don't do anything, if I leave my arm where it is, now I start to get, you know, Enrique puts me in split guard and starts to attack the short arm bar. So anytime I'm taking somebody down like this, I start to retract my, my elbow. So that's sort of a, some, a few options from, uh, from uh, the dog. <laughs> Do we have any questions on this, Mike? We have a question from Diego de la Garza. And he's saying, welcome back, Fox. Good to see you on the mat again. Can you show us some options for breaking the, the lockdown? Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah, that's easy. All right. So uh, that's actually a good question. Um, I'd like to get to uh, 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 Shu, Shu, Shu and Pepe's question from Japan. If we have time, Shu, if I don't have time, I will cover it next time. But uh, uh, So let's look at a scorpion. So guys, anytime, anytime in the half guard, I will take my foot away first. The biggest mistake that people make is when they get caught in half guard, they line up. So if I'm lined up, So if I'm, if I'm lined up, it's very easy for somebody to, to sweep me. So if they just rock me back and forth, and they're going to sweep me. Okay? So first thing I do is anytime in half guard, I sweep that foot back. So if I'm in half guard, I sweep it back. If I know somebody has got, like a, a scorpion is one of their electric chair, whatever you want to call it, has a strong scorpion, I will actually lock up my feet and start passing from here. Okay, so I want to be perpendicular, number one, but most importantly, I want to protect that foot, so I sweep it back. So anytime I'm in half guard, I sweep my foot back. Let's do it from the other side, too, so I even myself out. So as I'm passing, I, I just immediately take it away. Immediately take it away. First of all, now I'm perpendicular, so it's going to be a lot harder for Enrique to sweep me. That's number one. 
but most importantly I'm also not vulnerable to scorpion now as if I make a mistake and he locks up a scorpion my first course of action is going to be to stand up so this is this is really good uh, if you got to make sure you can stand up if the guy is holding on to you this is not going to be available right now this is very so my foot is flat on the ground if I start to lean back the guy's gonna tap. But right now, he cannot disengage. In MMA, this would be really good. Is it MMA? <laughs> so he can't, you know, he's stuck. So this is a really good way, but in Jiu Jitsu, most often, This will result in a submission. But I he cannot disengage until I let him go. Can you disengage? I can. Until I let go. I okay. can. Then I can. can. I, can. Okay. <laughs> I can disengage. I just had a question like the viewers. Well, I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you and the viewers that I can disengage. So this is actually my favorite one. As soon as... I, I, as soon if the guy attacks a scorpion, I just get my hand on his torso and pop up. First of all, guys, I don't let people lock up scorpion. If you let them make a, lock up a scorpion, you made a mistake. That means because you have to, if you're in half guard, sweep that leg back. Again, there's two reasons for it. One is to protect that foot from being rocked back and forth. And guys, I hate the scorpion. I have seen people both on the mats and in tournaments blow their own knee when they're doing the scorpion and blow the other guy's knee, okay? So I hate that technique. It's effective, but I hate it. So I've seen guys win tournaments by nothing but locking the guy in scorpion, rocking, 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 sweep, two points, win. Three matches and won a tournament. But I'd rather take that away. So take it away. And the second purpose is once you take it away, it forces you to go perpendicular, which is you're more stable anyways in that position. So that's the number one priority. If for some reason, so the third, third possibility, possibility is, so he locks it up again. If he locks it up, I made a mistake. So right now my first, again, I want to put my hands on, prop myself up, bring my foot all the way to the ground. And now... It's a submission. He can sit up. I can't. You can't sit up. By the way, this is kind of painful on my shin, but not as painful as it is for him. So I'm, I'll, I'll take that. So I will take that, but I can just release once I bring my foot up. Now, let's look at another one where you cannot get up. So if I can't get my hand, sometimes they just lock me in and they, I can't get my hands on his torso so I can stand up. So Enrique locks. So if that's the case, I'm gonna put my head, in this case, on his right side, not my left. I'm gonna swing my trapped leg all the way to the far side. Now he cannot follow me. It gets released. Now I can, now I take it away from him and I start to pass half guard from here. Let's look at it one more time. So again, he locks it up, and this time he, he holds on to me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my head next to his. I'm gonna swing my right leg as far as it possibly goes to make sure that the scorpion is free. And now I can switch back and try to pass from being perpendicular. I hope that answers your question. GM Baseball is asking, how easy is it to stand up if he has it really tight? You can stand up. The, the, the issue is, can you get your torso up? If you can get your torso up, you can stand up. You have to practice it because people kind of... Uh, so, yeah, lock up the other side now for a second. So, if I can... So, right away, if, if once he... Once he uh, 
uh, gets the scorpion, I will actually reinforce it. So I'll flex my ankle so he cannot disengage. If you cannot stand up, if your torso cannot pop up. So immediately, once I put my hands on him, I'm going to stand up by bringing my leg close to his butt. That makes it possible to stand up. Right now, he cannot disengage. I can disengage. If I, if I flex my left ankle like this, I can disengage, but I don't want to because I know this is more painful for him than it is for me. So you can stand up, just, br oh, we're down to five minutes? Crap. It's flying, flying fast. All right. Uh, so, yes, you can stand up. The key is to be able to get your hands in a position so you can get your torso up. If you can get your torso up, you can stand up. If you can't, then you're going to have to go with the third one. So, again, first one is prevention. Take the leg away so he cannot scorpion you. Second one is if you can stand up, stand up, because now that's an extremely bad position for him. And usually almost... And 95% of the time results in submission. And the third one is if, if, you, if you can't, if you cannot stand up because you cannot get your hands in a position to posture up, make sure, you know, basically your head next to his, swing that leg really far so that scorpion lock gets released and then swing it back, take it away from him for good. Do we have time for shoes question or no? Yes, we do. Or is there questions? Uh, Diego just followed up with, I hate it too. Thanks for the options. Perfect. So guys, so uh, Shu, uh, I hope things are good in Japan. I know uh, the Olympics, you know, it looks like they're going successfully, but uh, I know also the case is going up. So all the best to you guys. Um, he has a question from, uh, uh, from the guard when um, there was a video that I did with, with Enrique where, you know, sometimes what happens when the guy stands up and his his legs are really narrow. When they're really narrow, I'll drop my legs to his knees and I'll lock up my ankles and I kind of squeeze my knees together. So right now, Enrique has no base. So he, uh, Shu said, how do, how do I bring him forward so easily? It's not easy, actually. Uh, if I try to push him forward, it's not going to happen. Usually what I do is I... Yeah, yeah, you got you to go down. I lock him back down and get a, get a sweep. That's the first, first attack that I will make. So again, um, why would guys stand so narrow in the guard? It's a, it's a defensive mechanism because usually when they stand wide, so if somebody stands in my guard and their legs are wide, I can go in under left or right. You know, I can attack a variety of attacks from here. This is pretty much done. Um, so I can basically anchor by the legs and pivot around. So a lot of times when they when the guys stand up, they're trying to take any possible entries. Could be, uh, you know, could be X guard, could be uh, a waiter sweep, could be uh, uh, pivoting around from a, you know for an arm bar to an E bar. So there's a lot of different things. So some sometimes guys stand narrow. So when that happens, when they stand narrow. What I'm going to do is drop my knees, cross my ankles, and, and squeeze my knees together so he cannot open them. You cannot allow this. This is a major problem. So I'm, I've got to be at his knees, and I'm pushing my knees together. So my first peg is going to be take him down. I can take him down. It's going to happen. <laughs> Timber! <laughs> so it's going to happen. But if he, he has to, he has no choice. He has no choice. He has to go down. So the only possible thing if he catches this early is to throw his weight forward. And that's when the video uh, shoe that you posted is, he, why, is, he going, why is, is, is he going forward so easy? Because I initially attack his balance behind him towards his back. So one more time, guys. Guys, normally I would, if, if somebody's in my closed guard, I would try, I would control the head. I drop my knees, I attack his balance back, and now he goes forward. When he goes forward, guys, I'm going to pivot around, and I can either do one of those funky arm bars, bring it over, um, and he, that's the alternative. So either he's going backwards, in which case 
I stay on him, I wind up with a sweep, or he has to throw his weight way far, far forward, which makes the entry into the armbar position very easy. And we're out of time. No last minute questions. Uh, John Grappler is asking, I'm having difficulty putting my opponent's hands to the floor in X guard. I can wait until next time for the answer. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Um, so, yeah, I just, uh, I got to teach tonight. So I, <laughs> I'm hoping to preserve my back. Hopefully every, by tomorrow I'll still be okay. Then I'm, I'm going to slowly ramp up my jiu-jitsu game. I've been training in the water last week. So, uh, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for episode 20 of the season three, which is the weekly edition, 2021. 2022 is going to be at season four. I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers. Everybody's going to get confused, including myself. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, tag. Everything. Tell Everything. your friends, your girlfriend, your mom, your grandpa. <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys.